Russia and welcome to another exciting series of lessons where we'll be examining the idea of acids and bases. This idea is very useful in classifying chemicals. Now, classification is a key scientific skill. This skill of sorting things with similar properties into groups is something that we all do or have at least seen other people doing. Think what happens on washing days. The dirty clothes are all placed together in one container, but before the washing is done, the whites are separated from the colors and washed in different water. When the washing is dry, the clothes are folded and sorted again. This idea of sorting and packing things is used in schools too, particularly in libraries. Here you can see that books of the same sort are placed in categories together. Now, one of the most useful documents that chemists use is the periodic table. You have seen the periodic table in previous series of chemistry lessons. Remember, elements are sorted and arranged in groups. These are the vertical columns. On the left hand side are the metals and on the right hand side the non-metals. When we examined chemical reactions in an earlier series of lessons we found out that metal oxides are basic and non-metal oxides are acidic. But what do these terms really mean? In today's lesson we will investigate how to distinguish between acids and bases by using chemical indicators. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to distinguish between acids and bases by using chemical indicators. Now we know that in order to understand theory, especially scientific theory, we need to put it into practice. So let's go and see what John's up to in the lab. Oh, hi Diasha. Hi everyone. Come and have a look at the experiments we're going to do today. I've got four different types of solution. I've placed them in these test tubes. Come and see if you can notice any difference in them. Watch here. Do you see that each of these test tubes are filled with a liquid that we could say is clear and colorless? There doesn't appear to be any difference between them when we look at them. What happens if I smell? There's no difference. So can we tell them apart? How about adding something else to them? I've chosen some zinc powder. Let's see what happens when I take zinc powder and add it to each of the test tubes. Watch and see if you can notice any difference. Can you see that in the first test tube and in the fourth test tube here, bubbles of gas are forming, but in the second and the third test tubes, there doesn't appear to be any reaction. So that means that this set of reactions gives us a way to say that these two substances are of the same type and the two substances at the end must be of the same type. Are you ready for our second experiment? Remember, in our first experiment, we added zinc powder to four test tubes which contained colorless solutions. In this experiment, I've got four test tubes here with the same colorless solutions in them. But this time, I'm going to add a different substance, something that you can find at home. How about some tea? I'm going to take a few milliliters of this liquid and add it to each of the test tubes. Now let's have a look at our results. Do you notice that the N2 test tubes, the T appears to be lighter in color, where this one, the T is much darker, the middle one is in between. This means that T is a natural chemical indicator. It allows us to group things into two or three different groups. Let me introduce you to some learners who are going to help me. Nobele. 
Hello, Hi. John. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. you too. And Geke. Hi, John. Hi. Nice to meet you nice too. Too. We've got some coloured vegetable matter here. We're going to chop it up into really fine bits. Can I ask you to do that? And then put it into these beakers and pour water over it. I'm just going to go and get some other beakers as well. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Yep. So now after we cut it up, we put it into a small beaker. Small one, and then... We pour some hot water up over that. Yeah. Guess that's enough. And then water, water, water. Yeah. Give it a bit of a shake. Yeah. Wow, my water is turning blue. How about you? It's green. Blue? Yeah, that's so cool. It's weird because the cabbage is actually purple. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds for you. How are you doing there? Just finished. Quite uh, well. That's great. Yeah. And it looks like those solutions are going different colors. Yeah. Now we've got some test tubes here. And we're going to pour some of that solution into these tubes. Try not to get any of the leaves in. But if oh, it okay. goes in, it's fine. Is okay. that enough? No, that's fine. That's plenty. Oh. So you've got some leaves in there. Now we want to use this indicator, or this solution, to see if it is an indicator by testing our mystery samples from earlier in the lesson. So now I should take the first mystery solution and pour it into the first test tube over here. Right, let's see if it's changing color. Oh, Ooh, it went slightly red, pink. There you go. And then do the same with the second solution. And pour it right there. Okay, it stayed slightly blue. Mm -hmm. Do the same with Mr. Solution number three. Wow, it oh, went green. green! And lastly, solution number four into the fourth test tube. And it oh, also red. goes pinky red. Hey, yeah. look at that. That's, That's so amazing. Cool. Now let's look at Nobeli's test tubes. Won't you do the same thing there? And put a bit in there. It's gone a little lighter. Yeah. Yes. It's like water. And I'll put this one in there. It's gone a bit yellow. Yeah, and test tube number three. Looks like the first one. Yeah, it does. And test tube number four. There's hardly been any change over here, although there was a little bit of a change. So perhaps beetroot leaves aren't that successful. But really, red cabbage was really nice, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But do you notice the pattern is almost the same? The middle two are similar, and the outer two are similar. And that corresponds to the ones that we saw on the T. So we found that natural indicators can tell us the difference between substances that may be acidic or basic. We cannot always use natural indicators in every situation, but rather depend on synthetically produced indicators. Litmus paper is one of these indicators. Let's take a look at the same solutions Johnny's busy with in the lab. I am going to test them again, this time using litmus paper. Again, you can see that these test tubes react in the same way with litmus as they did with the natural indicators in John's lab. The blue paper turned pink, and this one changed from pink to blue. When litmus turns from blue to pink, like this group of substances, we call them acids. When litmus turns from pink to blue, like this group, we call them bases. Now notice in this solution here, the blue litmus remained blue, and the pink litmus remained pink. This means that this solution is neither an acid nor a base. We therefore say, that it is neutral. Now, the idea of acids and bases has in fact been around for a long time. Even before scientists use indicators, they were able to classify substances into these two groups based on their taste and feel. Now remember, 
We never test chemicals in the laboratory, but food found in the kitchen is safe to test in this way. Let's do some taste testing. In your kitchens, you should be able to find some interesting stuff that you can use to conduct your testing experiment. Here are a few good examples. A glass of water, some lemon juice, vinegar, bicarbonate of soda, and washing powder. Now, it's important to draw up a table to record your results and use only a small sample of about half a teaspoon. Remember to rinse your mouth out with water after each test. Which substances tasted sharp and sour? That's right. Lemon juice. And vinegar. And which substances tasted better? Bicarb. and soap. Notice that water was not sour or bitter. The sharp tasting substances are acids and the bitter substances are bases. Water is a neutral substance. We can also use the feel of substances to decide if they are acids or bases. Bases have a very soapy or slimy feel, but acids don't. Let's confirm these results by using one of our natural indicators, T. Look here, the lemon juice and the vinegar turns the tea yellow, while the bicarbonate of soda and the washing powder turns the tea darker brown. And remember, we said that based on the color of the tea, we can group these substances into different categories. The light yellow color on the tea classifying an acid and the darker brown color of the tea classifying a base. Let's take a look at today's task. Make your own natural indicator and test it with these household substances. Remember that not all plants contain indicators. Try different plants near your home and see which ones change color the most. Join me for our next lesson where we will investigate other indicators and make comparisons between substances that are all acids. Until then, goodbye.